<clears throat> so I, I've been meaning to make this video for um, the last uh, couple of months now. Um, <laughs> um, there's a lot of misconceptions going on about generative AI and, and, and such. And, and frankly, people are in a hysteria about it, you know, like, like you know, aside from, you know, all of the backlash that people get for, for using AI, you, you know, people basically just see AI everywhere they go now, like, like anything that they don't like immediately, they, they just assume it's AI or something, you know? And so I, basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video um, talking about uh, generative AI and um, clearing up a lot of the misconceptions and frankly misinformation about it because I do believe that a lot of the people who, who fear monger about AI don't understand how the technology actually works and are just making assumptions about it and just confidently saying what they think is the truth about AI which you know is really bad so yeah I, I feel like this is a very important video to make uh, if for no other reason than to clear up misconceptions although my fear is that the people who will need to see this video the most um, won't even bother to watch it at all but you know what can you do about that you, you gotta think about um, the people who are willing to listen rather than the people who aren't so so actually I want to start off talking about um, the legitimate concerns that there are to have uh, about generative AI because if you want to have a fair and honest discussion about something you got to talk about the negatives as well as the positives of something so one of the first legitimate uh, complaints that people have about AI is the potential for job displacements uh, particularly um, in works such as like you know animators in hollywood and, and stuff like that you know uh, people think that you know oh if, if ai takes over then then artists and animators will lose their jobs because the studios are just going to have people write ai prompts instead of having actual people you know do the actual animating and artwork and stuff like that but the thing is in an ideal situation, no nobody who, who currently works as an animator or an artist in, in the industry would lose their job. They would just start using AI tools instead. It would allow them to do their jobs faster and they could, by extension, do more work, you know? Take, for example, uh, season two of Invincible actually has a joke where you know they talk about you know shortcuts that they, that they take in animation uh, in, in order to you know, do the jobs more quickly or, or and stuff like that. You know, they, they, they talk about shortcuts that they take to, to help, you know, finish the animation on time, like uh, uh, covering people's mouths or otherwise showing them not talking in order to not have to animate characters speaking, wide panning shots of, of, of an environment, you know, with, with lots of people, nothing's moving, but it looks animated. And uh, stylistic inconsistencies are the three things that they point to um, in that scene. And one of the ways that, that animators and artists could benefit from uh, using AI is not having to cut these corners in the first place, or basically they, they wouldn't need to cut these corners uh, to begin with, you know, so they could have scenes where they don't have to hide characters' mouths, or they could have fully animated panning scenic shots and, and, and avoid stylistic inconsistencies and whatnot, you know, because the AI would allow them to do their jobs much more quickly uh, than if they just hand animate everything themselves, you know? that That's one of the benefits of, of using AI that I think people are um, overlooking and, and aren't really thinking about when they're completely against um, the use of AI wholesale. And yes, the, the, the risk of, of job displacement is in fact a real one because I absolutely do believe that, um, because you see, AI isn't exactly easier to do than, than hand drawing stuff necessarily. It just requires a different set of skills to know how to utilize, you know, like just like how operating a camera is different from drawing something yourself, actually knowing how to write a prompt and, and use all of the various features that AI artists use to control the output, like control net and regional prompting and, and all these other things. That just takes a different set of skills than, than, than just hand drawing itself. And in reality, the best way to use AI is in conjunction with your own artistic skills that you already have. Like, like with the invincible example that I gave. So, um, in reality, you know, 
you can't just replace the artists that who are already working you the best thing you would do is teach them how to use the ai tools so that way they can take advantage of them and like i said um allow them to do their work more quickly than they can at the moment you know now having said that i i actually actually do uh do not think that um you know executives and stuff and people like them to um <laughs> to understand this and thus they, they might just, you know, fire everybody and, and hire AI artists to, to take over. I don't know how, how soon we're, we're going to see that happen, if ever, but yeah, I, I, I can totally see that happening. And like I said, because of that, it is a legitimate concern, but the prospect of people losing their jobs due to new emerging technologies isn't a problem specific to AI. It's a problem with capitalism. It's nothing new and we've seen it happen before, but AI is not the, specifically the, the cause of it. It's always a, been a problem that, that, that's been around, but for some reason, you know, people are especially concerned about it when, when, when it comes to AI. But like I said, in, in an ideal world, you wouldn't uh, re replace the, the artists and animators, you would just teach them to, to, to use uh, AI tools, and, and that's the best way uh, to use AI. So, so that's one of the le legitimate concerns uh, 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 about AI art. Um, the next is uh, the misuse and um, unethical um, ways in that AI can be used, for example, uh, making non-consensual deepfake nudes of real people or creating images of things that didn't actually happen uh, for the sake of spreading misinformation. These are, um, in fact, le legitimate concerns um, to have about AI, um, but this is not a problem with AI itself. It's a problem with the way people use AI. You see, a lot of people seem to think that because they see a bunch of people using AI in bad ways, that that's specifically what AI is for, but that's not the case at all. In reality, it's the way people use AI that matters and not the fact that AI exists in and of itself that is good or bad. So this is a legitimate concern to have about AI, but it's not a problem with AI itself. It's just the way that people use it. And plus, it's already against the terms of service of pretty much all of these uh, online AI services to, to use it in such a way. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, people don't necessarily have to abide by that, but if they get caught, you know, uh, using it in this way anyway, then of course, you know, you're going to risk losing their account and such. Obviously, that, that's still not going to stop people from using it this way if they really want to, which is why we need laws and regulations in place in order to help in, enforce um, against using AI in this way more broadly. And, and as of me making this video, there's already, you know, a couple of laws being written and, and such like that to, to prevent the misuse of AI uh, for purposes like this. You know, it's kind of a shame that it took AI being misused in this way against a celebrity in order for um, these laws to get the ball rolling. But, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And it's unfortunate that that's what it took in order for uh, these laws to start to, to be discussed and in order for them to take place and whatnot. But, you know, like I said, that, that that's basically how it always works with these things. You know, it, it's not a problem until... It happens to somebody famous, you know? Now, the last thing I want to talk about um, as a legitimate concern um, with regards to the use of generative AI, and this is one that I haven't seen anybody yet really talk about because they only seem to be concerned about mostly not legitimate concerns about AI. But basically, um, one thing that I worry about is that people will eventually start to get used to using AI so much that They'll basically hyperfixate on making content that's only specifically for them using AI. Like, like say, you know, however many years in the future, people can start achieving their own creative endeavors entirely by themselves just using AI, you know. What I worry about is that people are going to be making content so specifically for them that they stop consuming all other forms of content altogether. Like, they just stop subjecting themselves to other kinds of content, you know, like, like, oh, I like this, so I'm just going to use AI to make it, you know, and, and that, that that's all I'm going to consume for the rest of my life, you know. This, this is already uh, pretty much a problem, but it'll basically contribute uh, to the problem of people being unable to distinguish the difference between um, 
something that they don't personally like and um, something that is uh, objectively bad. Now, like I, like I just said, um, this is already a problem, but I think that if people get used to um, using AI so broadly that uh, it'll just make this problem even worse. They use AI to make content that's specifically tailored for them to the point where they don't want to consume anything else. They'll become unable to distinguish between personal preferences and objective quality. And um, by extension, uh, they also won't want to share anything that they create with anyone anymore because they made it so specifically for them that they figure, oh, you know, why bother? You know, I, I made it just for me. So, so you know, who the hell else would, would like this? You know what I mean? That also, you know, would, would be a problem because one of the whole reasons why you you make something creative is to share it with everybody else, you know, but if everybody's making content that's just specifically for them, you know, they might not feel the need to share it and thus, you know, so yeah, th that that's a legitimate problem that I, I think could arise with AI eventually. I'm, pro I'm pretty sure that if you look hard enough, you can already see it happening um, already, um, but it'll happen on a much larger scale over time. And like I said, I, I, I don't see anybody talking about it really, because they seem to be concerned with every other uh, AI problem, which I'm going to go into right about now. Oh, yeah. Uh, one last thing that I, I want to mention uh, on this front. Um, I, I, I do think, so like I said already, that this is already a problem, but I do think that um, we, we can at least mitigate damage that, that would be caused by this problem um, by encouraging people to think critically, give them media literacy, and encourage them to be more open-minded to other viewpoints in order to help them understand the difference between personal preferences and, and something that is objectively good or bad. So that's, you know, how I think we, we can help uh, combat that problem, which, like I said, already exists, uh, but, but AI will, will, will just make worse. And so, so that covers all of the legitimate uh, problems uh, with, with uh, generative AI. Uh, the rest, um, I, I, I think, are, are all um, not legitimate, so to, so to speak. And, uh, oh boy, this is, this is a lot to cover here. So, uh, yeah, l let me start with the one that I, I think gets brought up the most and uh, I think is also um, because I think this is the strongest argument that, that people have against generative AI, but it's also one of the ones that's perhaps the most, um, I don't know if I want to say dishonest or, or misinformed, but it, it could be both depending on the person. But anyway, it's the idea that AI arts is plagiarism and or art theft because the materials used um, in the training data for AI art programs are used without permission and are, are not sourced or given credit to. Okay, so although plagiarism usually does involve the lack of permission, obviously, because, you know, if you're intending to steal something from somebody, it's not like you're gonna ask them for uh, permission, right? Obviously. So, um, obviously, uh, plagiarism does usually involve lack of permission, but lack of permission in and of itself is not plagiarism. It's just an aspect of it. As long as you're giving due credit to your sources and or otherwise not complain, uh, not claiming that someone else's work is yours, then you are in fact not committing plagiarism. But even with that in mind, we do have this thing called fair use, where if you do use someone else's work in your own, if your work is transformative enough to be considered a new work, then it's fair use, which AI definitely is. <laughs> like, there's so many examples and it's so obvious just from looking at most AI art that it is in fact new work and thus transformative of whatever the AI was trained on. So even if copyrighted material is part of the training data, it doesn't matter as long as it's being used to make new material because it's fair use and therefore not plagiarism. In fact, one of the main selling points of AI that you, you often see on a, a lot of these um, generative AI uh, websites is imagine something that doesn't exist, right? That's one of the main selling points of AI. If plagiarism was the point of AI generators, then this would not, and in fact could not, be a selling point of AI. And I, I think um, also this idea that, that AI is plagiarism is also um, uh, substantiated by the false idea that the AI itself 
is the artist, which is actually not the case at all. You're going to hear me say this a, a lot throughout this video, so bear with me. But basically, the truth of the matter is, is that AI is not the artist. It is the tool, okay? And as a tool, AI is literally incapable of claiming ownership of anything. Therefore, it is definitely not possible for AI to plagiarize anything because plagiarism definitionally requires that you take credit for someone else's work. And if AI is incapable of claiming ownership of anything, then it cannot claim that it is taking someone else's taking credit for someone else's work. Now, uh, there's also the issue of uh, text generators like ChatGPT and other chatbots. You know, people say, "Oh, well, well, you know, these chatbots, you know, they're, they're plagiarizing, you know, all the text that that uh, from all of the text that 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 they're fed to and 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 whatnot." But okay, again, the, the way these programs work, um, the text that, that chatbots like ChatGPT uh, generates is obviously transformative. And, and um, unless it's like directly quoting something, you're often not going to find um, text that is literally copy and pasted from whatever sources that, that chatbots like ChatGPT use um, w when you write something to them and, and it gives you something back. So uh, like I said, you know, the text um, they generate is original, but more importantly, if you ask ChatGPT where it gets its information from, I'm pretty sure, and I tested this myself, that it will actually tell you um, where it got its information from. For example, so I asked ChatGPT um, who was the first person to write a peer-reviewed uh, paper uh, detailing uh, climate change. And it correctly told me Zavante Arrhenius as the first person to uh, write a, a peer-reviewed science paper uh, detailing climate change. Now, obviously, um, ChatGPT can get things wrong, thus incorrectly state things, which is why they say you should always double check everything that ChatGPT tells you. Um, you know, because of the way it works, um, it, it, it's, it is entirely possible for, for it to um, state something incorrectly. But in this case, it actually uh, uh, got um, who was the first person to write a paper about climate change, right? But the point is, if you ask ChatGPT where it gets its information from, it'll tell you. And um, that's just talking about uh, ChatGPT. Microsoft's um, AI chatbot, Copilot, if you ask it um, where it got its information fr from, it will literally cite its sources and link you to them. So that way you can read um, the, the entire text of, of where it got its information from. So yeah, <laughs> so much for um, plagiarism and not citing your sources on that one, eh? And with regards to ChatGPT, as of me making this video, it is uh, it has a knowledge data cutoff of January 2022. Not anymore since I took so long to make this video that ChatGPT's information data is now updated to October of 2023. But regardless, uh, the point that I'm about to make here still stands. So in other words, if you ask it about anything uh, beyond uh, that date, uh, it has no other choice but to give you original text on it because it doesn't have any data that it is trained on for events that have taken place beyond that date. Now, sometimes it might give you some information about events that have taken place beyond that date, but it is very limited. And especially if it's something that that literally just happened, like like take any random news story that, that happened like like yesterday or, or, or today even. Like I said, it, there, you, there is no data that, that ChatGPT is trained on that it can just copy and paste from, you know, when it responds to you. To, as you tell it about this event. So, so like I said, you know, the idea that that chat GBT is just plagiarizing whatever data is in its training data, it, it is just nonsense be, be, because like I said, it has to generate original text when you respond to it with things that um, are not in its training data. And to give another example of that, I have, um, <laughs> I have told chat GBT, uh, a large amount of outrageous, outlandish things, you know, things that are very obviously not true. And it is often responded in a way <laughs> as if what, what it is saying um, 
as if what I'm saying uh, is true. You know, I've told ChatGPT Chat GPT that I'm a robot. I've told ChatGPT that I'm a tree. I've told ChatGPT that I'm a fish. <laughs> I've told ChatGPT that I'm 600 years old. I've told ChatGPT that I'm from the future. <laughs> I told Jack TBT that I'm dead and, and so on and so on and all these crazy outlandish things that can obviously very, very obviously not be true. But because Chat GBT cannot fact check you in real time on any of this, it'll, like I said, just believe you and, and most of the time act as if what you're saying is true. And so be, because of this, it obviously has to generate, like I said, original text in order to respond to it because what research paper exists out there that gives you details on how to talk to a tree, you know, or, or you know, how trees physically communicate with vocal cords and, and, and whatnot, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're very obviously, you know, the, these are all fictional concepts and, and what have you and, and things that um, do not exist in real life. Thus, it cannot cite you know, like a, a document or research paper or anything like that to tell you, well, okay, th th like I said, fictional concepts, but but still, chat GBT is acting a, a, as if these things are real. And, and there are no exa real life examples uh, uh, of people, you know, like, like talking to trees and the trees talk back or talking to fish and the fish talk back and so on. So yeah, th that, that's another way in, in which the idea that, that ChatGBT is just plagiarizing anything is, is rubbish. And to give another example, so aside from uh, ChatGBT and Microsoft's Copilot, Google is also now trying to get into the, the AI market and they have their own chatbot now called uh, Gemini as well. I, at first, I wasn't using Gemini all that much, but then I eventually decided to start using ChatGBT, Copilot, and Gemini all at the same time. You know, and because I I did notice that um, that they would respond differently to to everything I'd write. So eventually, I started giving them all three of them uh, the same prompts. You know, like like so I would tell ChatGPT something, read its response, then copy paste what I wrote to ChatGPT onto Microsoft Copilot. And it would give me a different, even if it's similar re response. And then I would also copy paste uh, what I wrote to ChatGBT to, to Google Gemini as well. And so, so basically the, the point that I'm trying to make is that all three of these chatbots um, react differently to the things that you write to it. So if plagiarism was the point of these generative AI programs, then this would not be happening. So that's another way that in which that these, these AI programs are not plagiarism. And uh, one thing in particular that I want to point out about, about Google Gemini is that um, <laughs> whenever I, 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 I like present things to uh, Google Gemini, especially if it's me making an argument or, or you know, something like that, um, it will often um, respond with counter arguments to the points that I made, which forces me to confront counter arguments to the points that I'm making. So I actually think that um, I wouldn't necessarily say uh, um, that, that Google Gemini is the best or, or that any one of these uh, AI chatbots are the best or anything like that. But um, Google Gemini, I, I think, has the potential for um, encouraging um, critical thinking skills um, with, with how it provides uh, counter arguments to uh, the things that, that you say to it, you know, like if you present it with it, you know, an argument for or against something, you know, and things like that. So I'm not saying that not all of the chatbots should, should start doing this, by the way, and 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 some of them will, um, if you just ask them, you know, to provide uh, counter arguments or help help you refine your, your own arguments if you're again arguing for or in favor of something. So basically. <laughs> I'm getting way off track here. The point is these chatbots are not plagiarism because they produce original text and the fact that they all respond differently to the same prompt um, is one of the, the pieces of proof uh, proving that. Now to speak about um, um, plagiarism and, and um, not giving credit for things more broadly, um, I, I want to talk about tropes real quick be because tropes are used in creative endeavors all the time, you know? and, and most tropes have been around for so long that we can't necessarily trace them back to the first piece of work that, that used them or whatever. And yet people use tropes in movies, video games, TV shows, etc. 
all the time and without necessarily giving credit for, you know, the person who originally came up with whatever tropes are being used. So if that's not plagiarism, then, then why should it be considered plagiarism for AI to not cite its sources or disclose the data set for whatever it is that it's generating? I, I think that's a bit, a little bit unfair and a bit of a double standard that, you know, we can use tropes in, in media all we want, but, but somehow when, when AI doesn't cite its sources, it's plagiarism. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't remember where I saw this. I think it was on Twitter, but some people can train AI to copy an artist's art style. What do you think? Personally, I think it's a bit unfair to the artist. I, I, I would, I'll, I'll get to this eventually, but, but, um, but uh, to, to, to give a quick run around on, on what I think about um, using AI to copy other people's art style, um, copying art styles is something that artists themselves could already do. If you take the time to, to, to learn, you, you could already learn how, how to copy uh, somebody else's art style to begin with. Like, like it's not something that you need AI to do, thus it's not a problem specific to AI. But, but more importantly, um, I think that if somebody uh, wanted to copy somebody else's art style, then I think then it's like they say, um, you know, imitation is, is the most sincere form of, of flattery in, in any of that. I think that somebody who wants to copy another person's art style um, is doing so more as a way of, of paying tribute to them more than, than, than trying to steal from them. And um, as long as they're drawing something that's original, um, then I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with using somebody else's art style. And, and not to mention, like, I, I feel like that, that most people have a unique enough art style that even if somebody else draws it in that same style, that, that you can still tell that it's the, the artist that originally created it. And, and also, um, you have to consider um, that um, rather or not, if you can copyright a uh, an art style is a legal can of worms that I don't think is necessarily worth opening because if we're going to talk about things like copywriting art styles, then um, th there's an analogy that I like to use um, when talking about this, where I say that that copywriting an art style, it would be like trying to, to copyright gameplay mechanics in video games. And that would be a, a huge uh, stifling factor in creativity for, for games, you know, like, like imagine if you know, fighting games, for example, couldn't have characters that shoot fireballs anymore because Street Fighter did it first, you know? I, I don't really see um, copying art styles as a problem necessarily. You know, I do think that you should give credit to the original artist who came up with the art style. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that even if you don't, most people will recognize where the art style originally came from anyway. Like, like if you drew something in the style of Don Bluth, then I'm, I'm pretty sure people would still recognize it as his style rather than your own unless they somehow never saw anything drawn by Don Bluth before. You know, if you draw something in the style of Akira Toriyama, rest in peace, then people would be able to recognize his style and so on and so on, you know? So that's basically the, the general idea of what I think about copying art styles in, in general, as well as using AI to copy art styles. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it, just as long as you put your own unique spin on it and, you know, you're drawing something original and, and, and not just directly copying you know, pictures from the people that you're borrowing the art style from. Yeah, most of the time, artists take inspiration from a lot of artists to create their own art. I feel like if artists couldn't take inspiration, then they would be pretty limited. Yeah, exactly. If you could only draw things that only you originally came up with yourself, that would be a pretty big uh, stifling factor for, for creativity in general, you know? As I mentioned earlier, all art is inspired by art that came before. And basically, I don't want to say nothing is original anymore, but effectively nothing is original anymore, you know? Basically everything that, that gets made now is inspired by something that has already come before. So the way AI works is completely no different. You can't create art anymore, basically, um, without being inspired by, by something else. And so the fact that AI is trained on already existing data, like <laughs> what other data are you expecting AI to be trained on? I mean, obviously you could create a data set of entirely original work comprised entirely of, of things that, that you made yourself and, 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 or things that are already in the public domain and, and so on. But that, that's going to severely limit what the AI would be capable of in, unless you actually go through the trouble of creating a massive data set. Like the best AI uh, art programs are ones that are trained on literally millions, if not billions of, of, of images, you know, that that's what makes them 
work so well. So you would literally, if you want to create an AI that is trained entirely on your own data, you would basically have to create that many images of vast amounts of concepts, characters, and types of objects and people and so on in, in order for it to work as well as the AI programs that we have now. And I doubt that without a team of people that you could just create a massive data set like that built entirely on your own materials. So I, I, I think <laughs> asking uh, the creators of these generative AI programs to disclose their data set or to create a data set that's comprised entirely of their own original material or that they have a license for is just a tad bit unreasonable. And, and not to mention, artists in the past have already used techniques that more or less work um, similarly to how these uh, generative AI programs work. Uh, Norman Rockwell, for example, projected uh, photographs onto a canvas and painted over them to create his paintings. That's awfully similar to how specifically image-to-image -image, uh, generative AI works, you know? So I, I'm not really seeing... Uh, much of a difference between that and image-to-image and, uh, -image technology in generative AI. So honestly, if the way that artists can, can use techniques like that to create art isn't plagiarism, then I don't see why we should immediately start considering AI art plagiarism. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, that's that that's different. You see, Norman Rockwell, uh, he, he's a human. He, 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 he knows how to draw draw art and, and, and stuff like that he, he learned how to use the tools he he, he didn't just copy and paste uh, you know a, a, a picture he, he he actually knew how to draw and blah 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 i want to say again ai is not the artist it is a tool and just like um how norman walkrell needed to learn how to use his tools effectively in order to create the best art that he could ai artists need to know and understand how to use generative AI programs in order to create the best art that they can create. So like I said before, it's not that AI art is easier to make or anything like that. It's just a different set of skills that you need to know how to use in order to create art effectively. And I can go on forever talking about how, how AI art is not plagiarism, but and, and that's honestly one of the reasons why um, this video has taken me so long to make me because as I was writing it, I, I kept thinking of, oh, well, I also got to bring up this point and, and oh, I, what about this? And oh, uh, here's another point that, that, that I thought of that that can help uh, support my argument. But eventually you just got to learn to t tell yourself to stop and, and, and just say what you want to say and, and stop adding <laughs> To, to what you want to say, you know? So I feel like I, I, I've covered um, the, the a, why AI art is not plagiarism enough. So let's just move on to the next point that I hear gets said a lot about AI art, which is that AI art is bad because it's made with AI. <laughs> okay, so even ignoring the fact that this is circular logic, obviously, AI art is bad because it's made with AI. Like, like, like what's the argument there? Like, like, like <laughs> what am I even supposed to say to that? Again, I, I feel like this this point is um, coming again from the idea that the AI is the artist, which, let me say again, AI is not the artist. It is a tool, okay? The person using the AI is the artist, okay? AI is, is not the artist, it's the tool. So even, you know, putting aside the fact that that's circular logic, we also need to remember that all art is subjective, okay? Nobody can definitively, objectively say, what is or isn't art, let alone what is good or bad art, which is why I used air quotes earlier when I said people can't tell the difference between personal preferences and objective quality. So, like I said, I think the idea that the AI art is bad, it, the, the line that you hear from, from these people um, so often is, um, you did not create that. A machine made that, you know? That's the line that, that you hear from these people more often, which, which again is conflating the tool with the artist. And I feel like one of the reasons why um, people say that AI art is bad because they typically only see examples of AI art being bad uh, whenever they see it. But AI art is not bad because it's made with AI. Because like I just said, that's circular logic. The problem is mainly on social media, you know, like, like whenever you see uh, people post AIR on Twitter. The problem is most people just write the prompt, hit generate, and then publish whatever it is that the AI made without any further iteration 
or trying to change it or improve it in any way whatsoever. And so because people keep seeing uh, examples of AI art that are like that, they just assume that, you know, all AI art must be bad because they're only seeing the negative examples of people using uh, AI art uh, poorly or, or misusing it, you know, so they automatically default to um, AI art is bad in and of itself, which as I just explained, you know, it's not that these people are just seeing examples that reinforce um, their preconceived notions about AI. Now, now some people might not say that AI art is bad in and of itself, but but rather they think that AI art is bad because it's lazy to make um, art using AI. And now, let me just say um, right off the bat that the idea that lazy equals bad is itself both a lazy and bad argument. I don't understand where this idea comes from that that effort somehow automatically equals good. <laughs> you know, like like there are plenty of examples out there of things where, where people clearly gave it their all, gave it their best shot, put in their best effort, what have you, but you know, whatever it is that they were trying to create um, still turned out bad anyway. It's not all that uncommon to hear about, you know, oh, this movie was bad, but this actor w was good in it. Like, clearly, you know, that actor put in a lot of effort into uh, performing that, that role well, but just because they performed their role well doesn't mean, you know, the movie's good you know, or anything like that. And, you know, there are countless other examples that you can point to, to people putting in a lot of effort towards trying their best, but it still turns out bad. The unreleased 1994 Fantastic Four movie, <laughs> which Fox never planned to release. People who are working behind it gave it their best effort, but Fox didn't give them the budget or the time or anything like that. Like like I said, that they didn't plan to release the movie, so so of course they didn't care about how it turned out, but, but, they, but the people who actually worked on the movie still gave it their all. It's just wasn't good enough. And, and then, of course, there's Duke Nukem Forever, which <laughs> at name, because it literally took forever to come out. And, you know, despite all that time that it spent um, being worked on, it's still, whether or not if it was bad, it, it's up to you to decide. I personally haven't played it, but I heard it, it wasn't, for how long it took to make it, it, it didn't live up to the hype, you know? So there are examples of art not being good despite having been made effort to take place. So yeah, the idea that laziness somehow automatically means that something bad just isn't true. This is also leaving aside the fact that AI isn't lazy just because it's easier to do than traditional art. As I mentioned before, it's not necessarily easier to do than traditional art forms. You know, it just requires a different skill set from what people are used to when it comes to creating art, you know? For example, when you physically draw something yourself, you have full direct control control over what it is that you're drawing, right? Now, even though AI artists have a degree of control over what it is they draw, especially if they're using tools like ControlNet, regional prompting, after detailer, and so on, they can control uh, the output of what it is that they're trying to make. But uh, at the same time, they're still at the mercy of whatever it is that the AI generates. And, and, and the random, unpredictable nature of AI art is um, not only something that gives AI art its own unique value, but also is one of the reasons why it's not necessarily easier to make art with AI just because it can produce it faster than someone who has to draw everything entirely by themselves physically. To simplify this, traditional art takes more time to create, but you have direct control over um, everything you're doing, and AI is, is faster, but requires a lot more trial and error because of the randomness of what the AI produces. So it, it's much more about refining the results or even changing the, the RNG seed to get something closer to uh, what you want. Because uh, aside from what you write as the main prompt, the RNG seed is the second most determining factor of how the image comes out. It, it's much significantly less a factor the, the, the more direct control you have over your AI output, but still it's something to consider. And these points that I'm bringing up about traditional art giving you more control, whereas AI art is faster, but you have less control over it. That's part of the reason why I say the best way to use AI is in conjunction with your own art skills. It is possible to, to create good looking AI art that was entirely made by AI, but for the most part, it, it could potentially take so long that you might as well have just drawn it yourself anyway. If you really want to make the best use of AI art, the best way to do it is to have the AI generate something for you um, as a base, and then you change it, refine it, you know, do whatever you want to it afterwards. 
or you know start off with a basic sketch and then have ai do the rest and then you refine those results or even just you know have the ai generate a basic concept for you and try to draw ideas off of that and then basically be inspired by you know ai art to, to create something that you otherwise might not have thought of to create there's plenty of applications for ai art that aren't lazy and, and just you know write a prompt and hit generate. Again, I, I feel like this is an idea that comes completely from misunderstanding and not actually knowing uh, how AI art works. And so um, that's why if you think that AI art is lazy, I want you to actually try to create something entirely from scratch, like, like come up with an original idea for a painting, drawing, whatever, and create it from scratch entirely using AI and, and don't refine it at all. And, and when I say try to create something with AI, I actually mean actually try to seriously make something like a professional art piece with AI entirely. Actually try to learn how to use the tools, learn how everything works, how to write prompts, what model you need to use in order to get the desired result, what settings you need to use, what, what scheduler, what they, how control net works, how regional prompter works. Learn how to use everything and, and, and tell me, you know, just how easy it is to, to actually get the desired result exactly as, as you want it compared to if you just, you know, draw it yourself. I feel like if people actually start to seriously use AI tools and, and learn how, how, how everything works, they'll, they'll start to realize that it's not necessarily, like I said, as easy as write a prompt and hit generate. You know, there's a lot more that goes into it than that if you actually try to make something creative with AI art. And if you ask somebody, you know, what their workflow was when, when creating something that was actually like professionally done, I can guarantee you that their workflow isn't going to consist of just a prompt and that's it, you know? And even if it is, then the prompt likely isn't going to be an exact literal description of what the picture is, you know? It's probably going to be something a lot longer. And, and this is something that, that people also don't think of when it comes to AI. You can actually generate a picture and then remove pieces of it and replace it with something else or cut something from an AI generated picture and put it into another AI generated picture, basically image compositing. Aside from people not thinking that you, you, you can edit the, the AI art that you make, people also don't seem to realize that you can put combine elements from different AI art pieces and put them together. You know what I mean? So like I said before, the best way to use AI art is in conjunction with your own art skills. But if you really think that it's easy to use these AI art tools, I challenge you to actually try to learn how to use these programs seriously and on a professional level and tell me just how much easier it is to make AI art compared to traditional art. And, you know, just in general, we, we really, we seriously need to kill the idea that effort automatically equates to quality and focus more on what the end result is like. The end result matters more than how it's made. For example, this comes back to the whole point about, you know, you, you didn't make this a machine did, you know? Even if that was true, why does it matter? Like I said, a, a lot of anti-AI people only see the bad results that get posted on social media, which reinforces their already negative idea of what AI art is. But I'm pretty sure that even if they saw good examples of AI art, then they would still say that it has no value or it's worthless simply because it was made with AI. There's also been countless examples of people not realizing that AI art is AI art and saying it's good, but then immediately change their mind as soon as they learn that it's AI. That actually makes no sense whatsoever. How are you gonna say, oh, this looks good, and then immediately change your mind just because you, you find out, you know, oh, it, it was made in a way that you didn't think it was made. You know what I mean? Like, like think about how the houses we live in nobody thinks about how we we are perfectly fine and, and and comfortable with living the houses that we live in without even considering that they might have been made with slave labor or unethical uh, work practices like, like underpaid workers or just in general exploited workers and we don't consider you know the environmental damage that may have or definitely have been caused from the houses that we live in were constructed by, you know? So if we're gonna be okay with living in houses that potentially were made 
by exploited workers or with damage to the environment, then why should we be so concerned about how AI art was is made? You know what I mean? Like we have to be consistent if we're going to care so much about how it's made versus what the end result is. It's actually very similar to the way people think about, you know, CGI in movies. People will say, you know, all oh, the special effects in this movie were so good, but then immediately as soon as they learn that something is CGI, oh, it's terrible. Oh, this movie's bad now. Oh, I can't believe that they use CGI uh, to, to, to make the scene, you know. It's the same way with, with AI, you know. People will literally say that they love a piece of art until they learn that it was made with AI. Who cares as long as it's good? Seriously, like, like, if you're gonna care so much about the way something is made, be consistent about it. Don't automatically say it's worthless now or, or that it doesn't have any meaning because you, you learn about how, how it's made, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen pieces of art before that, that look so real that I actually thought that they were a photograph. And when I learned that they actually wasn't a photograph, that, that it was something that somebody, you know, painted themselves in Photoshop or whatever, I didn't immediately think to myself, oh, well, it's not a picture, you know, somebody didn't take this as a photograph, so it must be terrible now. No, like, I didn't change my mind immediately after learning that it wasn't an actual picture that someone took. The fact that somebody actually drew it and, and it wasn't a picture that was actually taken didn't change my opinion a, about the art piece. So why should the way we treat AI art be any different? And, and I know people are going to say, oh, that's different, you know, because that was made by a human, you know, a, a machine made, made, you know, AI art, which, again, I, I got to reiterate AI is not the artist, it is the tool. Please learn to understand the difference between tools and artists. What really is at the core of that problem here is that people are not just conflating the artist with the tool, they're conflating literal creation with conceptual creation. The AI is what literally creates the, the piece of art, but the person controlling the AI, let, let me put it this way, People are used to the artist being the one who both came up with the idea for the art and being the one who physically created the art themselves. AI basically messes with this preconceived idea of this is how it's always been, therefore it's always how it should be. The AI is the one that literally creates the art, even though the AI artist is the one who came up with the idea for the picture or whatever. For some reason, people think that there's a difference now because they either can't or they don't want to reconcile the difference between literal and conceptual creation. And the thing about this way of thinking is, we already have forms of art where the person responsible for the conceptualization of the creation isn't solely responsible for the literal creation. TV shows, movies, video games, music, stage plays, these are all things that are literally created by entire teams of people. But most of the time it's just a couple of people or even just one person who came up with the idea for that specific piece of media. So I don't understand why, why we can't think of AI as just the same thing. The person controlling the AI came up with the idea and AI is just what they used to bring that creation to life. So that's basically what it comes down to um, with, with how AI works and how AI is used. The person comes up with the idea and the AI is how they bring their creation to life. Yes, AI literally creates the work, but it's the person who came up with the idea that they use the AI to create. This also uh, goes into um, the, the next point um, that I want to bring up, which is the idea that, that AI art has no intentionality behind it or any creative direction, which again, as I just discussed, th this is conflating the literal creation with conceptual creation. As I already said before, AI is the tool, not the artist. Obviously, whoever is using the AI to create something has an idea that they want to create, but AI is just the means by which they create their idea. And as I've been bringing up uh, throughout this entire video, AI art tools already give you a great deal of control over uh, what the final output looks like. ControlNet, you know, allows you to control the pose of the people or the person, you know, in the art. Regional prompting allows you to control where, what, uh, 
things are in the prompt. After detailers cleans up and fixes uh, details that AI is known for getting wrong, like faces and hands and, and whatnot. There's a lot of tools that I, honestly, <laughs> I haven't even tried them all out because there's so many and, and I don't even know what all of them do. But, but if you actually um, look into it and, and try to find you know, what all of these different tools are, you will see that if you're actually trying to create something seriously and professionally, then you have a lot of tools at your disposal to control what the output looks like and aren't just writing a prompt and hitting generate. So there is intentionality and direction behind AI art. Like, like even if what you're creating is something as simple as writing a prompt and calling it a day, there's still a reason why the person writing the prompt wanted to write the prompt that they did. And also how you write the prompt matters as well, because how, how you word what you write uh, changes what the AI generates. Even if you use all of the exact same settings, even changing a single word can drastically change what the final result looks like. So the idea that, that, that there is no artist behind AI art or that there's no intentionality or direction behind AI art, you know, that's all nonsense because if you, again, if you actually seriously try to use AI art tools and learn how the programs work, they give you a great deal of control over how to use them. And somebody who's looking to achieve a serious creative endeavor would learn how to use them seriously and thoroughly so that way they can actually achieve the, the desired result that they're looking for. One last thing that I, I, I want to bring up here um, on this point is that a lot of people on social media, whenever they see AI arts, like to post a picture of Mario holding a pencil or whatever, and he's saying, you know, pick it up, you know, like, like they're, they're basically telling, you know, AI artists, learn how to draw, pick up a pencil, etc., etc., and so on. And I, I just want to say that it's completely disingenuous of these people to say that because when they say pick up a pencil, what they actually mean is AI art is worthless. You will never be a real artist. This is garbage, et cetera, et cetera. Many similar sentiments and, and, and so on. I, I just want to say I would infinitely have way more respect for these pick up a pencil people if they would just say what they mean instead of hiding it behind a dog whistle like a fascist, okay? You want to call AI art garbage? Just say that. Just say you don't like AI art, you think AI art is trash. Don't pretend that you care so much about people learning how to draw when in fact all you care about is feeling morally superior to other and calling AI art trash. Say what you mean and stop hiding behind this pick up a pencil bullshit, okay? I do want to bring up uh, one, one last point with regards to the whole idea that AI artists don't know how to draw or that it's easier to make and, and, and so on and so on. Aside from the fact that, as I mentioned before, AI art is a different skill set rather than uh, something that's necessarily easier to create than traditional art forms, you also have to consider that even if AI art somehow was easier to make than traditional art, that still doesn't devalue traditional art forms, you know? Just like how um, the invention of photography didn't devalue uh, traditional painting skills or how the invention of the digital camera uh, didn't devalue the skills of having to manually um, shoot and develop a uh, film yourself and how Photoshop didn't devalue um, physically drawing on a canvas or a piece of paper or whatever else. AI arts doesn't devalue any traditional art skills that the people who have already developed them already have. Your skills as an already existing artist are still valuable. And as I said before, AI art is just a different way of creating art, not a better or faster way of creating it necessarily. Your skills as an artist are still valuable even with the advent of AI art. And the fact that a lot of these AI art people automatically get supported by thousands of people anytime they speak out against AI art um, supports that. You know, like people still clearly value your skills as an artist and people still clearly care about traditional art forms. Don't think, go, th go around thinking that, that, oh, nobody's going to appreciate my skills anymore uh, because AIR exists now. No, your, your skills as an artist are still valuable. And as I've said before, the best way to use AIR is in conjunction with your own already existing art skills. So that's just another way in which the existence of AI art doesn't devalue the art skills that you already have, okay? Stop thinking that the existence of AI art automatically devalues your own artistic abilities. Plus, 
something else to consider that one of the limitations of, of AI art is the fact that it can only uh, produce things from the data that that's trained on, which means that it would be incredibly difficult for it to say, invent a new art style, you know, only a human can do that. So that's another way in which human artistic skills are, are, are still valuable, even with the advent of AI. Don't think that humans are automatically less valuable than AI artists, because they're not. They're, they're, they're still going to be valuable, you know, going forward. AI art is not going to take over traditional art forms, not anytime soon, at least. And again, humans have to are the ones who are operating the AI. And the best way to use them is with your own art skills. So it doesn't make you a lesser artist to use AI to augment your, your own artistic abilities or, or make the art that you want to create faster. You know, if anything, I'm pretty sure, you know, the people who enjoy your artwork would actually appreciate you being able to make the same quality artwork, but faster and by extension, more of it. So Again, your art skills are, are, are not less valuable just because AI art exists. Don't count yourself out just because AI art exists. The last thing I want to touch on uh, with regards to AI art is the idea that AI is getting worse because it's being trained off of itself. This is another idea that is basically based entirely off of a misunderstanding of how the technology actually works. Just like how a human is the one responsible for operating the AI and uh, controlling the outputs, humans are the ones responsible for curating the data sets, what images are in the data sets, labeling them, and so on. So AI is not autonomous. It's not self-operating. It's not scrubbing the internet for images and, and just, you know, picking stuff at random and thus including AI images in its, in its data set. Humans are the ones who create the AI models and the data sets for them. Thus, the only way that AI can be trained on itself is if the people curating the data set choose to include AI images in their data sets. Now it is possible that people can include AI images in the data set unknowingly by choice, since they might pick an AI image not realizing that it's an AI image. But given how closely you need to examine uh, an image and look at it in order to properly label it and train the AI on, on certain concepts and anatomy and whatnot, I'm pretty sure that somebody who, who is actually putting serious effort into creating a good uh, AI image model would eventually realize as they're looking at the image and properly labeling it and so on that the image that they're using in their data set was made by AI. And if an AI image is good enough to not be thought of as AI when it's included, or if it otherwise don't include the obvious mistakes that AI is often prone to make, which again includes the hands and face and whatnot, then honestly, what is the problem with um, including AI images in a training model exactly? <laughs> like like if, it, if it's good enough to, to, to not be noticeably AI or anything like that, or otherwise include obvious flaws, then it's not necessarily a bad thing that AI images are included in the training data uh, for an AI model, you know? To wrap this up, humans are the ones that control what's in a data set, not the AI itself, because again, it's not operating on its own. Humans are in control of it. And if the images look good enough that you can't tell it's AI anyway, then, then it's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, wow. Certainly, I could go on for longer uh, if I wanted to. Like I said, one of the reasons why it took me so long to, to finally make this video is because <laughs> the more you think about it, the more you can just keep going on and on and on about how most of the fears regarding AI are, are, are not legitimate and, and such, as I just discussed. But like I said, you know, eventually you just gotta learn to tell yourself stop and, and just go for it, you know. So I'll probably make another video talking about this topic again later on. I'm, I'm not sure when. Could be a year from now, could be a couple of months from now, but I, I probably will be talking about uh, this topic again, except this time the video will be longer and I will try to bring up all of the points possible debunking the hatred and misconceptions towards AI art. Um, but I just wanted to get this video out right now for the sake of covering most of the stuff about AI and, and quelling most people's fears um, about it. So if there's anything else that, that you want me to discuss with regards to AI, ju just post a comment on the video. And if it's something that I didn't brought up or if it's something that you want me to bring up in, in a future video talking about AI, ju just mention it to me and I'll either respond to the comment or I'll bring it up in that future video um, whenever I make it.